Welcome back to the High Value Man Conversation. This is episode 29, and I got a very, very special interview. I'm here in location in Chino Hills at HQ. This is the home of Fit Body Boot Camp, the home of The Project, the home of True Lean Nutrition, and my former home, and where my mentor, my friend, my brother, Mr. Bedros Koulian, has mentored me for the last handful of years, and so many other great men, coaches, and leaders in the world. And this is the house where great dreams are made. And I'm so blessed to be here. We had an amazing conversation. We went deep talking about the four F-bombs every man needs. That's your faith, fitness, family, and your finances. The path to leading a life being driven by your vocation, getting clear on your vision, and some things that you need to do as a man today, right now, today, before you'll get the mentor, before you go step into the next version of you, three things that you need to do first thing in the morning to be the best version of yourself. This is an amazing conversation with my dear friend, Mr. Bedros Koulian. Welcome back to the High Value Man Conversation. I am in studio with a man that does not need an introduction, uh, but for those of you that don't know and, and have been living underneath a rock, Mr. Bedros Koulian, my friend, my brother, mentor, founder of Fit Body Bootcamp, Truly Nutrition, of course, the Modern Day Night Project, Battle Ready Fits, and a whole bunch of other things. He is a gangster coach, all around amazing human, savage servant, and one of my closest, dearest friends, and I'm so grateful to have you on the show, man. Thank you, Aaron. Love the show that you're doing and the content you're putting out, it is literally transforming lives. Appreciate that, man, yep. appreciate it. Yep. Learn from the best. Thank you, man, thank yeah. you. Yeah, there's so much that I wanna dive into this conversation. And uh, you Where know, do first, we start? Yeah, first and foremost, um, I think the relationship of uh, a mentor Mm -hmm. uh, I would not be where I am now. I would not be able to have the impact. I would not be able to have the opportunity. I would not be able to um, have a beautiful woman in my life if it hadn't been for uh, the relationship that I've got with you, B, man. I'm very grateful for you, first and foremost. Yeah, I want man. to start with the gratitude. Um, but in that, I didn't even know like what I was stepping into as a, as a mentee. And so I know a lot of guys out there are looking for leadership this day and age. Uh, the work that we're doing with the project, the work that you're doing with your, with your podcast, men are looking for leadership. Yeah. And I think in that looking for leadership, I'd love to have a conversation talking about the mentor-mentee relationship. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a great thing to talk about. And throughout the dawn of time, when you think about this, there's always been a rite of passage, right? We've got the Squire program mm -hmm. that we run together, the rite of passage of a young boy looking up to the older men in the tribe, his dad, his older brothers, the older guys in the tribe as what do I need to do to get, get a seat at the table so that I can become a man who can be confident, who can be competent, who can protect, provide, preside. And so I think over time we've lost that Mm -hmm. But inherently, innately, every man feels mm -hmm. that that's missing. Like you can feel that hollowness missing, which is why you see young guys plugging their, their, their umbilical cord into the belly buttons of, of whether it's Andrew Tate or gangs. Jordan Peterson mm -hmm. or gangs or whatever. The, mm -hmm. Whatever it is, they will plug into some masculine figure mm -hmm. in the absence of that figure being there for them, which should be the dad, the older brother, a tribe, which these days is missing, mm. right? Yeah, but um, I think what we naturally organically have amongst our friendship, amongst our brotherhood with the project is exactly that. We challenge each other. We, mm -hmm. we constantly set s standards that we all try and meet up to because we're competitive. Competitive. It, it's in a man's nature to be competitive. We confront each other. We confront each other. Mm -hmm. There's constant conflict, mm -hmm. which sharpens the iron. Iron mm -hmm. sharpens iron. That all of those things that organically exist in any brotherhood, any gang, any tribe, mm -hmm. any military unit, any high-performing sports team, mm -hmm. if you're not part of that and you're just some guy sitting at home playing video games at night after working in a cubicle or driving your truck and you're just the lone wolf, mm -hmm. like you're going to be a dull, purposeless, meaningless individual. And that kind of leads to anxiety, depression, and... Uh, sedation, sedation, masturbation, yeah. distraction, all those mm -hmm. vices that keeps men trapped. Yep. Why has the lone wolf thing been such a big deal? Uh, well, partly for two reasons. One, over the last decade, we've seen how the opposition, which is big government, mainstream media, um, mm. film industry, television, radio, everything has 
pushed men into a corner and said, you're dumb, you're stupid, you're bumbling, you can't even tie your shoes. Uh, and so you look at any sitcom, any- Al any, Bundy syndrome. Yeah, the Al Bundy syndrome, mm -hmm. right? So, and then they decided, well, that's all great, but why spend another decade? Let's really accelerate that starting 2020. And with the pandemic, which is exactly what they did, if we can isolate men from one another. Mm. Like think, I, I gave this example to, to someone the other day. I said, uh, so I'll use this example with you. I'll say, Aaron, if you and I are gonna go to Mars, mm. and we're like, all right, man, Mars has like amazing resources. They have amazing rocks and, 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 and trees and water, and we want all of that. So we're not, we can't go and just drop a nuke and kill everyone. We're certainly not afraid of the female Martians. They're the physically weaker species. Okay. They're not aggressive. Mm -hmm. They don't have high amounts of testosterone and a desire to come together and kill like men do. Mm -hmm. But we are probably going to be intimidated and afraid of the male Martians. So what if before we go and, and attack Mars, mm -hmm. we spend a year or two demoralizing them? Mm -hmm getting them to feel weak, declawing, defanging them, metaphorically, mm -hmm. uh, separating them and segregating them to the point where they just feel like any sense of aggression or natural desire to protect or attack or have conflict. The toxic masculinity. Yeah, yeah. is bad. Yeah. And now we can just walk in and take the whole fucking planet. Yeah. Right? And that's this exactly has been happening what's been happening. longer than just the pandemic. Well, the, at the pandemic, they hit the acceleration button. Yeah, kind of like those Teslas where they yeah. have uh, level 11, yeah, yeah. right, on the volume. They went mm -hmm. to level 11 by segregating and, and, and declawing, defanging, and subduing masculinity. Got it, got it. So we have a, a mass of men that are subdued, castrated, distracted, and easily manipulated, the sheep. And the big shift is that we know deep inside we need mentors, we need people to look up to, we need tribes. Uh, as a guy listening, watching, you're realizing that you need that. What are you looking for when you're trying to find that mentor? Well, I think the first thing you should look for is does this person have the life that I would trade my life for, right? Mm. I was talking to um, Walter O'Brien. You remember him from Operation Black Site, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. He was for- Smart cat. Yeah, smart cats. Those of you that don't know, he's got one of the highest IQs on the planet. Mm -hmm. He was, they made a TV show on him called Scorpion. Mm -hmm. He was a hacker um, that hacked into NASA as a kid and later on ended up working for the US government. And he works on some really high-end stuff. Happens to be a friend. And I was talking to him yesterday and he goes, listen, I would never trade my life for someone who doesn't live the kind of life that I want to live. And we were talking about the idea of coaching because he was like, hey, Pedros, I admire what you do. I admire the type of business that you run. I admire the lifestyle that you have. And I was thinking of possibly working with you. Mm. I was like, wow, thank you, Walter. He goes, and anytime I look for a person who's going to coach me, I go, would I trade my current life for their existing life? Mm. And I thought that was the best way to describe it. If you wouldn't be looking to trade your current life for their existing life, mm. then you don't want to be mentored by them. That's thing number one. Thing number okay. two is today in the world of social media, it's easy to manufacture a big Highlight following. Real. Yeah. It's easy to buy your blue check mark. It's easy to buy the likes and comments and therefore look like you know what you're doing. So the other thing is what Ronald Reagan said, trust but verify. I'm mm. going to trust you're a good mentor. But now I want to see social proof. I want to see people, the examples that you've pumped out. I want to talk to people. Like, you know, when we sell a Fit Body Bootcamp location, mm -hmm. um, we have 10 to 15 different validators. Owners, go talk to an existing owner. Uh, we'll introduce you to them. Let them tell you the good, the bad, the ugly about a Fit Body Bootcamp. And then you decide if you want to join. Because that validation of proof, so clients that that mentor has worked with, have they gotten the results? Are they living a happier life? Is their life more efficient, more profitable, less turbulent, less frustrating? If so, hey man, get on board. And by the way, do you share the core values? If there was a yeah. third thing, do you share the core values? And I yeah. think the biggest thing that we all have, especially in the Project Brotherhood, is the, the four F-bombs. Those yes. are our core values. I wanted to bring it to, yeah, 100%. Right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so we got faith, fitness, family, finances. These are the four core values for the project, the foundational pillars that we believe a man of fulfillment truly has. Mm -hmm. you know, your faith, this is a belief-based mindset. You can do, you can be, you can have anything you want if you're willing to put in the effort and the energy for it. Uh, it is your fitness, your physical example of embodiment of what it means to be disciplined as a man. You are a leader inside your family. Your family friends look up to you. And your finances, you're making not only income, but you're making impact. You're having right. a powerful impact. And when you have those four foundational pillars, you got a life of fulfillment where other men look up to you. 
And I think to have that really, and I think what separates uh, the project cadre from like most men is that those pillars are natural when you know what your purpose is. Yeah. When you know what your vocation is. When you know who you are, yeah. then that just lights up those four pillars because it gives you that center point. Yeah, it really becomes like this beacon, this destination, like a pin on the map. Like, yeah. you know, if I'm saying, hey, I'm going to drop a pin on the map and you can come find me here using your iPhone. Well, it's exactly that. Once you have your vocation, your purpose, mm. all four pillars go in the same direction. Like yes. there is there is no, gosh, I'm tired, I'm not motivated because you're just eager to wake up, jump Driven. out of bed and work on that thing. Yeah, that that vocation, I've been, that's one of the key pieces we have for the guys inside our coaching is to help them discover, create and uncover their vocation. I think vocation is that missing piece for men. It really is. Like yeah. so many men are setting goals, but if more men really tried to discover why they're here. Like we know why we're here. We're here to make men better. We're here to serve mm -hmm. the mission, to expand God's kingdom, just to make and build better men. How do you discover that? If you're starting in the beginning, and you know that you want your purpose, you recognize it, you see it in someone like you, how do you build, how do you build, work on that? Well, I think one of the first things is to recognize that you need that vocation and mm. you have to realize, and we've talked about this before again at the project, we're gonna bring the project a lot here, but because it just serves the topic of this conversation. But one thing I always share with the men at the project is, as men, we are a lot like my dog, like your dog, like a German shepherd, mm -hmm. right? And a German shepherd especially needs to have a sense of purpose mm. and a routine. Mm. And when it has a sense of purpose, like, hey, we're gonna go out and play catch every morning and I'm gonna protect the house and I'm gonna shepherd your kids, like, like Cookie, our dog, who's part Mastiff, part German Shepherd, shepherds my kids around the house and the property. She feels a sense of fulfillment. She mm. feels like she has duty. Interestingly enough, when a German Shepherd does not have routine and structure to it, like a sense of purpose, it will begin to dig holes in your backyard yeah. because it will give itself purpose by digging holes because the alternative is to get depressed and anxious. Men are very results driven. Mm -hmm. We want to achieve something. We want to accomplish mm -hmm. something. And if we can accomplish something as a unit, as a team, mm -hmm. as a group, even better. And so first off, men that think, think that, you know, I don't have to have a purpose, untrue. Um, look, a woman has a naturally installed factory installed purpose it's like i'm gonna i'm gonna have a baby and that baby that came out of my body is my purpose mm. to raise it protect it nurture it feed it and send it off to serve humanity mm -hmm. like wow what a god-given purpose mm -hmm. we're not born with a god-given purpose mm -hmm. and so we have to develop it not find it because it's not lost mm -hmm. right it's not lost so you can't like is it behind that tree is it under that rock no we have to develop it so mm -hmm. yeah i would ask yourself this is what i do with my coaching clients I said, if I give you millions of dollars to live off of every year, pay for your health insurance, pay for your house, pay for your travels and everything, money's not an issue, Let's what go. would you do for free? Mm. Like, then they go, well, shit, if I don't have to work for money, what would I do for free? They immediately go, I would do this. Uh -huh. I go, great. Then be so good at it that people pay you for it. Yeah. Everyone told me back in the 90s when personal training even wasn't popular, like you were, if you were a personal trainer, Everybody would go, well, I'm gonna go work with celebrities. They're the only ones that have personal trainers back mm. in the early 90s, right? I was like, nope, but I'm gonna be rich being a personal trainer. And then they would go, but that personal trainer, he's a personal trainer and he's a waiter. That personal trainer is on his way to being a physical therapist. That one is gonna be a chiropractor. It was like a transitionary place being a personal trainer mm -hmm. in my time. And I was like, I'm gonna make it a full-time gig. I'm gonna be so good at it that people are gonna give me an obscene amount of money and today, with Fit Body Boot Camp, with Trulene, with I'm basically a personal trainer for humanity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's pull, let's pull on that for a second because you discovered you knew what your vocation was back in the day. I want to serve people, I want to help people. Yeah, and, and I would have done that for free. The gateway was fitness. Fitness mm -hmm. was the gateway. You recognize if I can help someone lose weight, build muscle, burn fat, they're going to get breakthroughs, which is going to be the the first step into their personal development journey. Yep. And from there, you went to coaching. Mindset yeah. coaching, yeah. lifestyle coaching, business coaching. Yeah. You've discovered your vocation. Yeah, and, and, and by the way, we all, we're not all born with like one purpose. Yeah. My purpose went from fitness and fat loss coaching because fitness changed my life. I was a fat kid, you know the story, but your audience ought to know this. I was a fat kid throughout elementary school, junior high and high school. The summer of senior year, I wanted to get in shape so that I could ask Nakaya out to the prom yeah. at the end of senior year. Great motivation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Women are very motivational for men and mm -hmm. so, I worked out hard, I, I ate right, I lost like 30 pounds, came back senior year and I looked jacked and I, everyone was like, wow, look at you. Uh, I never had the guts to ask Nakaya to the prom, so I never went to the prom, but fitness changed my life and I was like, I wanna be a personal trainer 
even if I have to have three or four or five jobs to make ends meet, which is what I did. I worked at a, as a bouncer at a gay bar. I worked at Disneyland as a busboy and was a personal trainer. But I became so good at being a personal trainer that I kept charging more, charging more, charging more. And when I ran out of uh, clientele space, I started hiring personal trainers to take on clients. And when I was a personal trainer, I liked the conversation that I would have with my clients in between their sets mm. because I would tap into their mindset. Mm -hmm. I would tap into helping them kind of break through limiting beliefs. Mm -hmm. and I was like, wow, more than being a personal trainer, I like working on people's headspace. Mm -hmm. As I grew a business and got better at building a business, my purpose changed again, mm -hmm. right? And I was like, you know what? I like business coaching because I like he helping people create financial freedom and sovereignty. And so your purpose will change with different phases of life. Like mm -hmm. today, my purpose is to be able to win time freedom, to just be able to pour into men and spend time with my wife and two kids. Mm -hmm. Because Andrew's 17, Chloe's 15, mm -hmm. I realize we've raised two very independent kids who are gonna fly the coop like they're supposed to. Mm -hmm. So these are my final years to be able to really spend time with them. Yeah. And so your purpose will change throughout life, uh, the seasons of life. But always ask yourself, what would I do for free if everything was paid for in my life? And then whatever that thing is, be so good at it that the world will pay you for it. And be willing to have the balls to go after and do it. Yeah. How many men to sit back and say, there's this thing that I would do, but they don't have the courage to ever do it. They're, they're passive with it. Yeah, that, that, that's unfortunate because that to me is the equivalent of slow suicide. Knowing that you want to do something, mm -hmm. but accepting mediocrity mm -hmm. is, is the slowest form of suicide I could think of. What's the shift in a guy that realizes I have this thing on my heart that I want to do, I'm inspired by whatever it is, but they just don't know how to take that first step? The shift is confidence. If you start stacking small wins throughout the day, you will start getting bigger wins. You start stacking bigger wins, you start winning the day. You start winning the day, you win the week, you win the week, you win the month, you win the month, you win the year, you stack years, you've won decades. Confidence directly is connected to competence. So if you want to be competent at something and you want to win at it, but you're like, Ugh, I don't know how, it's scary, Develop confidence here mm. so that you can develop confidence. There is something called the confidence competence loop. Mm -hmm. Confidence goes up, so does com competence. Because you're more competent, you're getting wins, confidence goes up, so does competence. So how does that matter? What, why is it so important to be confident? Well, your confidence is like your credit score mm -hmm. with yourself, your mm -hmm. reputation. Mm -hmm. So if, I always use the example of the uh, alarm clock, right? Like if you set your alarm the night before to wake up at 5 a.m., you made a promise to yourself. You made a promise to the universe. And then the five o'clock alarm goes off, you hit snooze button, you just told yourself in the universe that 10 more minutes of mm. shitty sleep- It's more powerful than your vision. It's more powerful than your vision. And therefore the universe will give you what you wanted. 10 more minutes of shitty sleep, you start feeling like a loser, you hit the first L, that stack of L dominoes, loser dominoes fell, and now you're just gonna stack losses all day long. You're probably gonna be late to your workout, eat shitty foods, make bad decisions, go to sleep frustrated. The day was shot, mm. the day was shot. Increase confidence by stacking little wins over time, Competence increases. That gives you the confidence again, the courage loop, to take the courage on future to challenges. take on that challenge. It ain't yeah. rocket science. Just motherfuckers need to get up and do it. Yeah, motherfuckers need to get up and do it. Stack victories, victories. We have this uh, formula. So we got a vision. I think it's step one. You got to know where you're going. Know mm -hmm. where you're going. Vision points the way to the values. Values are the decision-making process we make as most men. We all make decisions based on our values, whether we know what the values are or they're undefined. And then the values give you way to the victory. You stack consistent victories, build your confidence and competence. It gives you the courage to take on the vices, mm -hmm. vices that all men are dealing with that they don't want to talk about. That, I think, paints the roadmap for the vocation, that foundation for the faith, fitness, family, and finances for the type of man that I think we all want to be. Yeah. You know, success is simple. Mm. It, ain't, it ain't easy, but it's simple, right? I mean, look how you just outlined it. Four simple things. You do this, and that happens, and that happens, and then you do this, and this, and then that happens, and then there's the outcome. It is simple, the formula to everything. It is simple to wake up, get dressed, go work out, and eat right. But it ain't easy, yeah. because unless you have the structure, the discipline, the mm. focus, the consistency, you're gonna fuck it all up. Yeah, so what, what makes it hard? <clears throat> The story, the story that people tell themselves, like I failed before, so I'm gonna fail again. Mm -hmm. I've been told, I've been called gordito, and therefore I'm probably gonna be fat the rest of my life because family called me fatty growing up. Whatever their story was, everyone's got some bullshit story that they have sold themselves on. This is the equivalent of the elephant who, as a baby little elephant, is mm -hmm. tethered to a tiny little stake in the ground. As it grows up, 
they still tether it with that tiny little string and a tiny little stake, but it thinks that it can't get away, not realizing how big and powerful it is. Like your past does not represent your future, mm. but people have been conditioned like Pavlov's dog that mm. I didn't make it last time. I felt rejection. It didn't feel good. I don't want that feeling again. Therefore, mm. I'm not going to risk mm. doing something. And it's like, wow, this is your only run at life, man. Mm. Mm. Your only run at life. There is. This is not the trial run. This is your yeah. only run at life, and you're going to play it safe. You uh -huh. fucking pussy. Uh -huh. Wow. Okay. So on that breakthrough, you know, say we're uh, we're the personal development coaches, and we're not the hard hitting project guys, and this guy's on the edge of um, of wanting to make that decision of being the baby elephant and growing the big elephant. How does he pull the stake out of the ground? What are some tactical, practical? do's and don'ts to start building his belief system. Because we can hit him between the eyes and say, listen, you're being a fucking pussy, just do the work, like mm -hmm. step up and do the work. Uh, that has worked, I think, in many different aspects uh, of my life and it's worked in your life. Uh, but what are, what are some other ways that we get guys yeah. to go over the edge? How about three simple things? Just do these three simple things. If you're like the dude sitting at home, you like the idea of this, and when you're listening to Aaron talk on his podcast, you're so motivated, you're inspired, you're mm. motivated, but then an hour later it fades away, do these three simple things because you can do them all at home. You don't have to leave. And so I'm taking away the excuses. Okay. One, set the alarm to wake up at 30 minutes before you normally wake up. Just set your alarm from now on for the next 30 days to wake up 30 minutes before you're supposed to wake up and never hit the snooze button for 30 days. Mm. Just don't. Wake up 30 minutes earlier without hitting the snooze button. You already got your first W. Second W, bring 30 ounces of water with you to your bedroom in a cup, 30 ounces. Once your alarm goes off, Drink those 30 ounces. It might take you a couple of minutes to drink it all. Drink those 30 ounces because your body is dehydrated because you've been exhaling all night. Your brain is dehydrated. Your brain is 70% water. Drink 30 ounces of water. Do that for 30 days. And then finally, knock out 50 burpees. Ooh. You could do that right there in front of your bed. Uh -huh. I did that for a whole month when I was going from 1.0 to 2.0. Because mm. I was like, what are the easiest Ws I can get mm -hmm. that would take place in a, in, a, in a four by four right in front of my bed? Mm -hmm not hit the snooze button, drink my 30 ounces of water. Okay, I would run to the bathroom and take a piss and then hit my 50 burpees. Three wins in a row, I've got my dopamine spike, I'm Feeling hydrated, yeah. right? Yeah. Dude, now I'm owning the day. Any win beyond that is gravy. You do that for 30 days, you find yourself stacking more wins beyond that. It's that simple. I'm not saying go start an LLC and start a company. I'm not go s saying go, go hit on 20 chicks and figure out which one's gonna be your wife. Those will come later. Mm -hmm. Just those three simple things right in front of your bed. I love it, man. I love that. Practical, tactical, and it's actually something that will move someone's soul if they do it. Mm -hmm. All right, so we got the mentorship relationship. First and foremost, and probably the fourth thing on that is, is find a mentor or try to be a part of. You know, find people to pour into because you can't do it alone. We can't do it alone. We are mm -hmm. meant to design to do this as part of the tribe. And you find people based on similar core values that have alignment with what you're looking to do, what you're looking to accomplish. I love the piece of would I trade my current life for your current life? And that's one of those things that at the end of the day, if it worked for you, it'll work for me, mm -hmm. right? Yep. That's one of the greatest things I think we forget as men. If it worked for one man, it'll work for me. I, I tell you, the first time I ran a marathon, I was inspired because of you, B. We were in um, uh, Dallas at the time at that Fit Body Mastermind. Right. You were sharing your story about uh, running a marathon. I was like, it's gangsters, like talking about the wins, talking about the, the success, the, the lessons he's learned from it, uh, running in his trucks and like just having an awesome time sharing the story. And I was like, I want a story like that. Mm -hmm. I want a story like that. And I, I'd always use excuses, three ACL replacements, flat feet, all this stuff. I was like, dude's built like a gorilla. If he can run a marathon, I can run a marathon. Right. And it was six weeks later, I ran my first one on, on New Year's Day in uh, 2018, 2019, whatever that was. But it's just the reminder that if it worked for you, it'll work for me. And it helped you break seals, right? Like totally. we all have these like seals that we need to break through. Upper life. limits. Upper yeah. limits, glass yeah. ceilings. And it's like, again, three ACL reconstructions, flat feet, I'm not a morning person. Like we could stack all the reasons yeah. and excuses why. But at the end of the day, if it worked for one monkey, it'll work for another monkey. Because mm -hmm. that's all we are. We're just monkeys, man. Yeah. We just happen to be a little more evolved than we stand erect. You know, beyond that, people put others on such a pedestal, especially mm -hmm. men will put people like, man, if I was like him, I could do it. You think David Goggins was always the David Goggins that right, we know? Right. Like, go, go, go read about his past. Like, he yeah. was a fat fuck who worked mm -hmm. as an exterminator in restaurants, yeah. drinking milkshakes, watching Navy SEALs on History Channel going, gosh, one day I, I, I hope I can be like that. Yeah. He just decided to flip the switch. Mm -hmm. That's really what it's about. When are you going to flip the switch mm. to go all in? 
it, 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 no one deserves to be on a pedestal but you. And going back to what you said, mentorship, 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 mm -hmm. I hope everybody realizes that as a man, you have an obligation and a duty to go through all three levels of leadership. Yeah, let's go. Yep. And level one is to lead yourself, mm -hmm. right? We know that. Lead yourself. Be mm -hmm. fit, be financially stout, be emotionally whole, mentally tough, all those things. Then lead others. That's level two. Like lead others into like success. Maybe it's leading your family. Maybe it's mm -hmm. leading a business. Maybe it's leading a church or congregation. And then level three is create leaders. Mm -hmm. Be so good that you create leaders and those leaders are now leading others. And that mm -hmm. becomes the, the ripple discipleship. effect. Discipleship. Yeah, discipleship. Exactly. Yeah. And, and every man within says, man, I want to inspire others. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to support others. Well, the only way you do that is by one, leveling up yourself two, leveling up the people around you, and three, teaching those people around you to become leaders, and mm -hmm. now you've inspired humanity, mm -hmm. right? That, and that's how we change the world. Think about this, yeah. at the end of the day, but the project really, at, at foundationally, build one better man, you build a better family. Better family, build a better community. Better community, better city. Better city, better state. Better state, better nation. Better nation, better world. Bam. And, and it really comes down to the idea of leaders building leaders. It all comes down to the foundational tribes, building tribes, and men building better men. Mm -hmm. I love mm -hmm. it, man, I love it. What have I not asked you yet on the topic of mentorship, 4F-bombs, or the project? Mentorship, 4F-bombs, project. I, I think the, the, the bigger thing is like teaching men how to think. Mm. I realized recently that most men now, how about this, most of humanity now is being taught how to think. And if we don't teach ourselves how to think, and as parents, if we don't teach our kids how to think, they will be taught how to think by the school system, mm -hmm by churches, by television, by social media, by all the different things. Now, maybe if it's a private school and it's a church that I believe in, I'm okay with that because just like I would trust my son around you, mm -hmm. I have no problem you teaching my son core values because we have aligned core values. Mm -hmm. I have no issue with that. But would I put my son or daughter with someone who lives a very different value mm -hmm. system? Probably not. Mm -hmm. So we put them in schools and we put them in churches mm. and nurseries and we let them watch TV and play video games that really teach them how to think. And soon they become product. robots for the opposition. Product of the system. Product of the system. Mm. And I think a duty and an obligation that a man has is one to become a free thinker, like question authority, be curious, ask why this is so. And truly, <laughs> who is the fact checker? when they say this has been fact-checked, mm. by whom exactly, right? That's it. Again, going back to Ronald Reagan, one of the great presidents that we had, he said, trust but verify. Mm. If Ronald Reagan, one of the greatest presidents that we've ever had, said that, why wouldn't you then think that, all right, this has been fact-checked, but let me just fact-check the fact-checkers. Mm -hmm. They're saying that Biden is the best president, but do I truly feel that? Let me look at my bank account. Do I make more money or less? Uh, has chicken breast and eggs cost more or less? Uh, or Trump, whatever the president is that you want to hate, hate. My point is, if you blindly are taught to think by others, you will always end up becoming a byproduct of the herd. Mm. Tony Robbins said, if you want to be successful and happy in life, watch what the masses are doing and then do the opposite. Mm. And I believe that. Yeah, I believe That's what the free well. thinker does. What are some, as you're, as you're teaching your kids, as they're transitioning into this next phase of adulthood, they're gonna be the future leaders. How are you teaching them to think uniquely, um, to look at everything, to take it all in? Because there are deep lessons within um, the politics, within organization, within the world, within religion, where you can extract those and apply them to your own, but how do you apply your own personal value system to the general masses? How are you teaching that? Well, what I'm teaching my kids, is, and, and with my kids, is start off young, right? Yeah. But, but Proof of this is we teach grown men in their 30s, 40s, and 50s mm -hmm. core values that they, they can tell they wanted some core values. They didn't know what those core values were. When they stumble upon our core values at the project, they're that. like, I want that. Yep. Whatever it is that you've been drinking, I want that, right? Mm -hmm. And so th the way it's been it ha has been through exposure. Mm -hmm. There's nothing more powerful than exposure. So like if I tell my son, hey, go work out regularly, but if I didn't, I'm a hypocrite. Mm -hmm. If I tell my daughter, you know, you should date boys who are gentlemen and who will open the door for you. But then we go to, out as a family to the restaurant and I go right to the driver's side door and mm. I don't open my wife's and my daughter's door. I'm a hypocrite. Sure. And so I've taught them to think by way of, I demonstrate, I role Example. model 
I role model as an example of what I, they should do, of what they should see. Mm -hmm. And then I get them to question everything, question everything. Why is the red light that long for that uh, on this intersection? You know, why is it that long on that intersection? Why, why, why is there like a service fee on top of a tip when we're getting room service at this hotel? Like question everything and figure out, are they doing it to get extra money? Is that service tip go to the, the waiter or waitress or not? Or is it just a way to pad the bottom line of the restaurant? I get them to question and ask curiosity-based questions and that provokes thinking. Mm. And then they might go, oh gosh, I think it's for this reason. I go, well, my opinion is it might be for this. And we might even have a little back and forth on. tension, right? Like throughout 2020, I had a, there was a lot of tension with me and my son mm. because at school, at high school, he was like, no, man, I think we should be wearing masks. Mm. Like, cool. You wear the, keep wearing that mask and tell me how long you're going to Soon I saw him like lowering it down to his nose and then like it became mm. a chin strap and then soon mm. he had it off because at a very young age, I taught him freedom trumps everything. Mm. And he knows that. There's uh, something I'm just... Um, hit me. So the question, everything, I love that as a principle. And then the other side too is, uh, you know, part of, part of our growth as men is to be obedient as well, to understand a certain principles that we just need to follow, be disciplined to. How do you teach that fine line of question everything, but also be obedient and be disciplined as a man? I agree. I would never be obedient to the opposition's laws because those laws are written arbitrarily to benefit those in power. Mm -hmm. I would absolutely be obedient to consciousness, higher self, universal power, source, God, mm. however you want to call them. Like, obediency to my higher self is mandatory. I, uh, gangster. gangster. Mandatory. Talk to me on that, on that faith pillar. Talk to me on that. How do you obey something that is new and is intangible? When you, when you teach the, this faith pillar inside the project, we teach it through the process of breath. I always share with the guys that uh, breath is this invisible force. You can't touch it, you can't taste it, you can't smell it, but you go long enough without it and you become desperate for your next breath. Like that's yeah. really God, that's consciousness. And as you build a relationship with faith, most men struggle with it because like, A, I was brought up in a, in a household where I wanted to disobey anyone that told me what to do. Like I want to naturally rebel. Mm -hmm. I want to question everything. So how do you surrender to the process of your inner obedience to, so that you really develop a, a sense of faith? I think that the people that can surrender to higher faith have to first start being obedient to themselves. Mm. In other words, if you are breaking your own rules. Let's go back to the snooze button, right? You set the alarm, but then the alarm goes off, you hit the snooze button. Mm -hmm. You were disobedient to yourself, to what you wanted to do for your own good. Why would you ever listen to God? Yeah. Why would you ever listen to source if you can't even drink that 30 ounces of water, mm -hmm. if you can't even knock out those 50 burpees, if you keep hitting that snooze button? And so it starts off with self-discipline. Mm. I think the self-disciplined man is several rungs higher on the scale of connecting to consciousness, source, God, than the human animal man who is impulsive, mm. who is reckless, who uh, chooses pleasures over purpose and desires over duty. And so I think it starts there. Like if you want to build obedience to higher self or source or God, and you want to have that belief in God and faith, you got to first start having faith in yourself, um. right? And yeah, like yeah. we, that starts with doing the things that keeping your promises, your yeah. reputation, your credit score with mm -hmm. yourself. Mm -hmm. Gangster. Awesome. B, what are you most excited about right now? I'm most excited about the 2.0 version of the project that's coming up, man. The project uh, historically has been 75 hours long. And we always say at the project that, you know, the 75 hours is literally an awakening is your ticket into you meeting your higher self and you constantly polishing up your faith, your fitness, your family, your finances, so that you live a life of fulfillment. And I got to a place where I started to question if we as instructors believe that, that the project is that, then the men who ring the bell and quit, mm -hmm. they came in looking for help. Mm -hmm. They came in looking to develop. However, they may have made an emotional decision during a time when they were temporarily in pain or getting yelled at or sleep deprived or all the sure. goodies that we bring yeah. at the project. Does that mean that they don't deserve help and support? So I decided that the project moving forward is going to be a 12 month mastermind, mm. a full on coaching, high level coaching program where whether you graduate the project or not, 
you are in the mastermind where there's three in-person mastermind meetings right here at HQ. And as the group gets bigger, I'll rent ballrooms like I've always had from my high level masterminds. But what I want to do is whether you graduate the 75 hours or not, if you graduate the 75 hour project, great, man, you're part of the brotherhood. Mm -hmm. You're part of a brotherhood where we meet up, we have our private Facebook group, we network together, do business together. Um, that's awesome. But if you didn't graduate the project, you're still part of that mastermind, as are the graduates, where I will help them continue to build life structure, build an obscene amount of money, create wealth, sovereignty, and break through limiting beliefs in their lives. Because I believe that we should adopt a mindset of leave no man behind. And I'm super excited about that. Love that, man. Yeah, yeah. talking to the guy that uh, drives most of the bell ringers home. That is, uh, that's always the hard part in the conversation right? of like, man, like we, I wanna serve you, I wanna serve you. There's been a many a men sitting in that front seat of the car that just pour their heart out because they, yeah. this, they're looking at this as the one opportunity to shift their life to be the better husband, be the better father. But the truth of the matter is it can't happen in 75 hours. Right, and then yeah. it's like, well, what now? I ring the bell, all right, I, I, I screwed up and I ring the bell, now what, mm. right? Well, do we shun them? I, 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 don't, I don't think so, and, and this really started because you have, I have, like all the, all of us instructors have been doing this. We're helping these guys anyway because we care for them, we love them, they reach out to us and we help them and support them. So why not have a structured system? If you pay to go through the project, graduate or not, you're also doing the mastermind where we get to mentor you, coach you, pour into you and see you develop for love a it. year. Love it. 12 month discipleship. Yeah. Yeah. That's powerful, man. That's that a powerful. lot of touch points and a lot of impact. Yeah. Love mm -hmm. it. That's awesome. Awesome. I'm so grateful to have you here, man. Thanks, man. I appreciate the opportunity. You've yeah. got a great show. Thank you. Really appreciate you as a whole and so grateful for the, the relationship that we've had and the continued uh, mission to build better men. I know that we're just getting started. I want to respect your time. And uh, I know that we're going to do this again at some point as the mission continues to grow. Absolutely. But guys, if you found this valuable, please do us a favor and like it, share it, tag it. Tag a man that needs to hear this. Uh, go follow if you're not already. I would imagine you already are, Mr. Bedros Koulian, and give us a five-star review. Much love and many blessings. Boom.